Welcome um, everybody back on a new day on planet Earth, a new week on a Monday here um, at the Martin e. Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center CUNY from New York City in Manhattan at the City University of New York. Um, it's uh, uh, another uh, week uh, and months of confinement. We just learned all stores will keep being closed. First of all, because for one more month, um, everybody uh, is uh, uh, torn between the, the realities we see outside, the uncertainties inside, and, uh, and the spring and early, 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 the messages of a summer, but we really do not know what will be going on. The numbers are still uh, devastating. Um, our healthcare workers who uh, are now at the forefront, the people were overlooked by so many, perhaps also by us, theater artists, so we think we have to find new ways to reconnect to our audiences and define them and think them as, 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 uh, as people. Um, and, you know, they are uh, worn out. We hear it's, it's a really hard time. And, and there's so many questions out there. Will universities open? Will uh, sports event open? In Germany, the soccer game started without audiences. Italy slowly opened out. France had the D-Day, the the de, uh, 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 de opening uh, of um, a deconfinement day. And um, so we'll see how it all will go. Latin America has devastating numbers. It seems to slowly arrive there. Testing is coming out. And um, so we are continuing our mission now in the eighth weeks of uh, talks with uh, theater artists from around the globe, significant workers in the field um, of theater. And um, today we have an extraordinary um, theater artist uh, from um, Indonesia, a country we do not know enough about, we don't focus enough about it, we all should. It's the fourth largest country uh, in the world. It has the largest Muslim population in the world, uh, um, over 15,000 islands, as we just learned. It's, so it's a, a place of great, great tradition of theater and of course of literature and arts in general. And um, with us, we have the great Maria, or as she likes to be called, Ria Tri Solistiani uh, from the uh, Paper Moon Puppet Theater Company, the Asia Society. Uh, Rachel Cooper said, Frank, you have to have her on. She was supposed to come to New York to Lincoln Center. It didn't work out. And they're doing extraordinary work anyway, but also to this time. So. Um, Welcome, uh, Ria. Where are you right now? What time is it? <laughs> so I'm, hello everyone. My name is Ria. I'm at my house right now in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. And now it's 11 p.m. actually. It's time to bed, but it's good to have chat. Yeah, that's good. So, um, so do you have your family with you or how is it going? Is it, are we in your workshop? Where are we? Um, so we are in my house right now. So this is my kingdom actually. Um, mm -hmm. My husband and my son is already on bed, so... They are both <laughs> sleeping. Yeah, they're like, they there. <laughs> they're not watching the talk. <laughs> no. Maybe he's watching it from his phone cell, actually. But yeah, yeah um, uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm at my house because it's in the evening, so... But usually in the morning, I still go to my studio. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, what neighborhood do you live in, in uh, Jakarta? Where are you? So in Jogja, I live in the center of the city, which is actually um, inside the palace area. So mm -hmm. for your information, in Jogja, we still have King, which also mm -hmm. run as a governor. Um, and mm -hmm. then there is a kind of like um, the area of his palace, but people are actually live there as well. So it's we the are palace quite, area. But his it's palace, palace is, area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we are not the palace family. We are not the royal family. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just sneak inside the the housing mm -hmm. area. But yeah, I live in the center of the city and our studio is seven kilometers outside the city. Mm -hmm. So it's surrounded by forest actually and nearby cemetery. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. So uh, tell us a little bit, uh, what is going on in Indonesia? What are you, uh, do you have to stay at home? Uh, if so, how many weeks, days, what's going on? So since last, I think maybe the middle of March, people are starting to be asked to stay at home and all schools closed. So this is the second month of it. Um, like all closed, like no schools. My son have been, you know, having studied from home since March and then no office. 
like most of the office are closed as well. I think this has happened. I couldn't say like for all parts of Indonesia because it's you say it's fifteen thousand, but it's actually seventeen thousand islands. Seventeen thousand so, islands. Yeah. So it's really big. So, but uh, since most of the people here work in an informal section, so some of us kind of like you know still try to find the way. You can still go to the market. You still can go um, to kind of like, of course, uh, hospitals or going to pharmacy, uh, but. In a way, like because in Jogja, it's actually quite a tourist uh, city as well. So no, no tourists, no travel around. So it's for me, it's the best time for Jogja because it's very quiet. But yeah, starting, I think starting this week, people are kind of like starting to go out and then going to the shops. And I think also there's no really clear information from the government of what should we do. And I think also in the other hand, it's the character of the people. So it's kind of like, it's very hard to control in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I so can there say is people, no, you don't have to stay at home. You're, the government does not say you have to pay a oh, fine. Yeah. You, you, no, they, in Qatar, no, we hear someone suggested, mm -hmm. no, you're not wearing a mask. It will be three years of prison. Um, mm -hmm. I think in Romania, for some minorities, at least the Roma people we talk about, they, they have to pay 3,000 euros. How is it there? Do you have to wear a mask? Oh, is yeah, we do, have, we do have to wear masks, but there is no fines for that one. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's a public social kind of like, we can't say punishment, but like people are actually telling each other. So what I found it's very interesting is actually starting the first, um, it's not really lockdown, but it's like independent quarantine i can say because mm -hmm. each people each individual they're doing their own quarantine um and then it's starting that because we know that there is lack in the beginning there is lack of um the what do you call it the clothes for the health workers in the hospitals and some of our friends or some of the tailors they switch their work and then they help to make um those clothes independently and then people donate some money and make those stuff and also making masks um, and then this month it's starting, it's, it started to be shifted a little bit because people start to be hand in hand to help each other by some people are, you know, some artists, they stop to do their arts, of course, because of this condition, like they're not making performance, but they cook. And then the other friends are buying their foods, you know, so those kind of situation is happening mm -hmm. to help each other, basically. But w what is the situation with infections and um people who died with, with COVID-19, how is the um, situation? The number is not really clear, actually, um, that, is, that was published to the public. Um, I can say that seems like the government is starting to, what, would love to start the herd, uh, herd immunity, but it's kind of like, so again, like I've told you that it's still a bit unsure here, here and there. And then people were saying like, oh yeah, most of the people uh, who got the, the COVID-19, it's mostly the one that got a problem first with their lungs. So those kind of, you know, so that will be fine, but we still have to keep ourselves in distance. You know, those kind of very, very variety of, of condition, I can say with that. Mm -hmm. But I can say that most of the people, hopefully we are still thinking of, you know, just stay at home and, just go out in a very minimum way but it's not as devastating as in new york city or in new york state oh no yeah no not not really so you feel your government did the right thing and uh and things are working well i can say that indonesian people is quite unique <laughs> you know it's not really easy to control i can mm -hmm. say that mm -hmm. but um you know like i saw some news in in united states about there's some you know political situation also involved there and then it makes it very hard and I can say that people here as kind of like especially in Jogja people are really I can feel like they're taking care of, of each other so yeah I can still feel it's safe because of the community itself as well mm -hmm. especially in American hospitals but also old age homes um, yeah. are hit hard but you don't have that kind of situation no. Not at really. all maybe yeah. you also have less old age homes and they're more family structures uh, yeah yeah exactly so um as a theater artist um 
what did it mean for you? Are you uh, at all uh, working? Are, do you have things lined up? Can you go and perform? Are there rehearsals? Uh, well, actually, all of our because most of Paper Moon's production are toured um, to internationally, and of course, until December, we don't have anything happen. Uh, lots of our touring abroad were, of course, canceled. Like you said about Lincoln Center, we're supposed to be performing on May, but of course, it it was postponed. Um, and then, you know, this is the time that people, of course, we couldn't do any stage performance. Um, but we do some stuff actually because starting off the first of april we decided i was just thinking with with paper moon's team as an artist what we can do what we can help in this kind of situation so we decided to can i do this share screen now right is it okay of course, of course. tell us what you what you decided to do so you're doing show. you're not doing puppet shows or online performances what do you, what are you doing um so this is what we did in the big, very beginning of the, um, the, the what do you call it? Um, COVID the order crisis. to stay, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the order to stay at home. So mm -hmm. starting on the 1st of April, Paper Moon start to do this in this time. It's exactly like what we are doing right now. Um, mm -hmm. The series of talk with puppetry artists around the globe. And then we um, did it for 18 days, actually. And every day at 2 p.m. Jogja time, we interviewed lots of artists from around the world, basically. So, so almost three weeks you had every day exactly. an artist. Yeah. And why we're sorry, why yeah. we are doing this? Um, it's because we found that we know that lots of our friends who live abroad got a very different situation with Jogja. I can say here we still have our studio. It's still possible for us to go to studio. Um, so you can go in studio in a small yeah. group. You go and you rehearse. Uh, yeah, exactly. We still can do that, actually, but in a very, very minimum way, because we are taking our own scooter um, and then go in a very minimum, you know, kind of like amount of people as well. So we found that lots of our friends abroad didn't, of course, they couldn't get that um, opportunities at all. Even they don't have tools in their house to make puppets or, you know, making their arts. So by doing this talk, we are kind of like, saying hi and asking them what happened like how are you and and talking about their their love in puppetry and we found that it boosts their energy like it it gives a really positive energy to them as well and also to our other people who listen to that uh, we do this through our instagram um mm -hmm. and then it's very interesting because lots of people are following that uh and asking questions so it gives another you know, feelings. It gives another perspective of life in this in this mm -hmm. period. Where, where do the artists come from? The artists you have on your. Uh, we do have from uh, Thailand, Singapore, Netherlands, uh, Spain, Belgium, United States, Japan, um, Hawaii as well, Taiwan, Vietnam, French. So yeah, Turkish. So it's quite spread around the world. It's a, a fantastic idea. What did you learn? What do they? What do puppet artists say around the world? Uh, how do they deal with the crisis? Or what did they find that works? But this is what we found very interesting because most of them are saying that, of course, this is a very hard time. But in another way, we give the space for Earth to breathe. This is what we found very interesting, that the universe is having a big rest um, out of the craziness of human being, you know? so. So we found that, okay, this is the time that we give the space for Earth, for the universe, actually. So, yeah, this is what I found very, very interesting with this conversation with other artists. Um, and then the other thing that we did, actually, we do this as well. It's called Storyteller, um, In Your Pocket Storyteller. So we ask people, they can, they can ask us to make whatever performance they want. So they kind, I can say they bought a ticket and give us one theme. And then we sew three themes together to make one production, very short performance. But then we will send them directly to their phone cell through their WhatsApp. And then we- Let do... me get that right. So you, instead of artists having an idea and then trying to get the audiences to see the puppet show, you ask audiences, send us your ideas. You take three ideas you create an artwork and send it digitally to their phones. Exactly. 
So we made like around 100 performances because we do have like maybe 229 uh, audiences buying the tickets for making this happen. Mm. And it's it's been great. I mean, you so know, you, do, we you created over 100 little improvisation shows. Exactly. Exactly. Maybe around 70 <clears throat> to 100 around that kind of. Um, and how much amount. do people have to pay to? $10. So I could commission you guys. And... <laughs> exactly. Because what we were thinking in this position that uh, lots of people were really struggling with their job. They, many of them, they lost, they lose their job, of course, or they got, they don't know what to do. But in the other hand, also everything happened just only on the screen. Right. So we found that this is, we could accompany you in a different way because you couldn't see performances. All that you can see is all movies or, or document uh, documents of performances, but how if someone make a little gift for you that it's made specially for you? So we found that this this becomes very interesting approach as well for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then it, can everybody see the shows, or is it just uh, those people, the three people who commission? Only it? just only those three people who can see the show. So it is very very special for them because on the day they opened the phone and they said oh i got this okay i have to be ready some of them say it's great it's beautiful some of them say oh thank you so <laughs> we mm -hmm. never know and so then if also, someone some of our listeners but if they go to the website puppet uh, a paper moon uh, puppet, puppet theater, theater. they mm -hmm. could go and commission a work actually it's happened all it's already happened so it already made, happened like, okay we made too much for that like two, mm -hmm. two, uh, two sessions for that and then it's already finished but then incredible after, idea i never heard of that that's fantastic yeah. <laughs> thank you and then also as an extension of that project story taylor we decided also to give those performances to the health workers so in our instagram account we ask anyone who knows someone who work as an uh, health workers and who, th who you are thinking that they will be happy to receive a little gift from us, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny performances through their phone. Please give us their name and then the reason why we need to send it to them. And then we have plenty of messages came to us to, to send these photos of those amazing heroes. And then we send our performance to them and they say like, this is for a company, your break in between your you know daily work so mm -hmm. this is did what they like we, it did you get feedback yeah the help? They're, what did they, what did they say, say like it's really make their heart warm because lots of the time they got okay they got gift as from foods you know like people are donating foods or coffee or anything but performance no never they never got that so this becomes very special for them because they they can see something that we choose also the theme that it's kind of like litten up their day um, to make them feel better. I can say what are themes? What are themes you do for love, healthcare workers? Like love or um, yeah, like uh, what do you call it? Uh, the birth. So it's kind of like some things that give hopes, uh, warmth. So those kind of themes that we kind of like suit together. So we send it to them. So these are the photos of those people who receive some of them and oh, then also the healthcare worker around it right now yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. for that for for the mm -hmm. the previous photos but then also we had another project that we did because we know that lots of people keep working through zoom or or google meet always through screen yeah and then we found that okay let's make something that they can do something with their hands so through our Instagram account, we say that we would love to make an online puppet making uh, production uh, workshops. So everyone can make their own puppets from home while we are having, you know, a package to send to them through postal service. So this happened. Um, so we send them a package that contains all the materials because we know that they couldn't go out to buy their materials. So it's paper, uh, paper, wood, glue. Um, wood. glue yeah colors 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 everything and then Brush. we send it to them yeah and then we do have two sections of class we can say so they can try to make oh we also send i sent the video tutorial for the puppet making and then we have the first class to meet when they can you know like say about what is their problems and to know each other of, of course 
And then the second session is the presentation of their uh, puppets. So it's very, that was my very first time to do online workshops actually. <laughs> But what a wonderful yeah. idea. So you're sending the packages, uh, you're commissioning ideas from audiences. This is a truly um, an, a unique uh, uh, approach. So um, did they also then did a story, right? Did they do the puppet or you also developed stories with them? Do they write little no, stories we're, or? We're just uh, making the characters. So mm. they're talking about their characters, who are they, and then how they can play around with that. Um, and we discuss about why this character looks like the maker. So those kind of, because most of them, they never make anything like this before. Mm -hmm. They're, it's very new for them. So the complicated um, process for making the fingers. So those kind of uh, situation, but not really going to the stories yet. Mm -hmm. And who finances course. that? Who pays for the packages for the mailage who if, even if people commission you for ten dollars or for a healthcare worker um certainly that's not enough uh, to to keep you working and going how is that how does that work well this is the thing about um us i can maybe stop the sharing this thing yeah. first okay so what we are we, what we found these days is not it's not about is it enough or not for us but at least we can still create something and it keep the engine warm because I mm -hmm. think that this is the most important part, you know, like keep the engine than, warm. That's a yes. great idea. Yeah. <laughs> because we found that if, you know, if we keep being frustrated with the condition, I thought that it won't get better. You know, the thing that can make people feel better is actually to keep spreading the positive energy. And we know that the income that we got from, you know, doing these online workshops or commission the storyteller or everything. Um, it's not the same with what we usually had daily before. But then we found that it's not a big problem because, you know, because this is the most important part is to keep the engines warm. But who pays for it or who pays for you? Do you get help from your no. from Indonesian government? Nothing. or Do <laughs> no. you have, so you pay out of your own savings? Yes. So for the workshops, actually people pay to, to, to join the workshop to get the package. But still, um, it's not uh, most probably not fully yeah, covering the cost. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and also for the performance itself, it's we just running it, cover it by by those money. But also, Paper Moon is I can say we are paying our artists basically. But this is the point that we found that you know there is something that more important about about the money in this kind of situation, and that's that's about to support each other. And we found also, because for your information, in Indonesia, we don't have like clear grants, like big grants for artists from our government. And like I've told you, there are 100 million of people live, like million of people live in this country. So we, we can say that Paper Moon is an independent puppet theater company. So we survive by selling merchandises and making productions and also running our international Biennale Puppet Festival. So mm -hmm. those and kind merchandise of means you have t-shirts or what oh, yeah. Do you do? yeah you do have t-shirts mm -hmm. notebook tote bags um artworks many different types of mugs <laughs> many mm -hmm. things so you're completely independent uh, artistically operating small um enterprise that never expects to get money from a government and but so you had to early on find ways um, to support your work, uh, it is uh, that is uh, uh, truly inspiring. And um, and how how are you well known uh, in in your in Jakarta in your town? Uh, do people connect to it? What, where how is it connected to the community? What you do? Well, I can say that we are very lucky that we got um, a big support from our audiences and friends. Um, I can say that. Paper Moon is quite lucky in this condition. That's why we kind of like, we keep, we know that the way that we keep to, you know, uh, nurture the communities, nurture the audiences or taking care of them. It's really a big point for us because we survive because of them. Um, well, yeah, I don't know if we are famous or not because we are not in big TV shows or, but yeah, we got in, we got in, you know, like we kind of like have a quite big, um, audiences if we do performances so yeah you're well known yeah. also here internationally and there so that's 
in, in, incredible. Also, you know, for our audiences, I mean, especially in the US, there are cases that people break into hospitals, steal disinfectant mm. and masks to resell them on the black market. This is a company mm. of artists, performance and theater artists who take their own savings, their own time and work to make the world a, a better place. And I think this is what theater and makes theater and performance uh, people and those and the field we work in so special. They're very generous, they're open and we really keep the world um, we live in in mind. And um, so um, do you feel some of the things you do now came out because of COVID? Did you have new ideas or is this things you already did before? Mail-in puppets, commissioning place. Did you do these things before or is it you came up with this now? So for the story Taylor, we did this production live in live performance actually. We have a little ten only for people to they can come and see the performance. They can commission us with any kind of themes. We did oh, that. Oh, it's part of an improvisation. Exactly. Theory. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But then when we we shift the medium, then it changes, you know, like how we will make it happen. But then right now, because we are actually keep thinking about should we you know, screen our documentation of our last or previous production um, in the way of, you know, moving from live performance to digital. But we found that, no, it's not like what we would love to do. So these days we are actually doing some experiments for our new productions uh, that we thought that it would be just only be fit if it's, if people see it online. So, <laughs> So yeah, we are still cooking these ideas, and hopefully after the Eid al Fitri, the big Ram, uh, the big Muslim day, we could start to produce that one. You sort of, I know you are still in the last week of Ramadan. Yeah. Um, do you do you do any artwork in this uh, period? Uh, do you do performances or? Um, these days, because it will be a week before the Ramadan, we are not really making productions this time because all of our team starting to have break and go back to their families because some of them, they are mm -hmm. split quite far. So they have to reunite again. Oh, thank God it's happened. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, for this time, we are kind of like cooking some ideas, but the production will be happen maybe around June. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, just, it's remarkable. We had Lula Arias, who is a, a filmmaker and playwright and director from Argentina, who has something completely different, but somehow similar. And they are similar because they are so different. Um, she had uh, performing knowledge sessions. You ask writers, is there something you work about, something you, you um, uh, keep on your mind? It's somewhere in your archives, on your hard drive, but you have never really shared it do that and she you used to do that live in a small theater people would come and talk about something they're obsessed and now of course in covid time they can't do that but she said why not doing that online so she's creating a series of artists who then do that talk online and the same was you did you said we did these kind of uh, stories on demand with audience as kind of an improvisational theater practice that one knows from uh, stand up comedy but also here you use in the in the puppet work and then you say, why not commission work? But it's a complete uh, a change, a reversal almost. So you do get commissions by the audiences without curators in between or be out people saying you get a grant for this or that. It's kind of a direct uh, democrat democratization. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, of the arts. And um, do you think you will continue doing this? A hundred is a large number. You did it some stunt, right? <laughs> but do you think it's a new form you invented? And it will continue, or do you think it's just something, one idea we tried out uh, during COVID? No, I think this is really interesting ideas to be developed as well. So we love, I mean, our connection with our audience is really close. I can say, for example, like every time we finish our production on theater stage, like live performance, we always, always invited audiences to come on stage and to talk to us, touch our puppets. Every, see every our performance. Session every single performances. Mm -hmm. So that's how, how we actually really feel like audiences are really big part of our hearts. So yeah, through this story, Taylor, we found that, oh my gosh, the reaction are really interesting because you couldn't get the direct reaction in the same time, Frank, because it's very different, right? Like mm -hmm. when we do the storyteller inside the tent, four people in front of us, they can, we can definitely see their reaction. And mm -hmm. 
how they see the puppets alive. It's very different with when you see the puppets alive on screen. So we found that it's always some things that you couldn't replace with screen. But that's why we found that, oh, maybe we have to try to find another way that makes this production is exactly just only for screen. So we don't know yet. So yeah, we are still cooking that ideas, but I'm very excited with these new ideas. It's actually based on the storyteller and we develop it again. Mm -hmm. so, and maybe one day you combine, you send packages, people make their puppets, then you get yeah. ideas for stories you, from them and you write us with them or do something. And uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, and it will be, uh, um, a, a new way that uh, technology helps you to, to connect that couldn't be done before, but it's an ancient uh, technology to make puppets. I mean, Rancière, the great French philosopher mm -hmm. said, if an ancient traditional form of art meets a new technology, something interesting happens, takes yeah. a while. But this is one of the innovative models we heard about on our talk and I'm sure inspiring for, for, for everybody who is, um, who is listening. Tell us a little bit about making theater and performance in Indonesia, is that easy? Is it complicated? Uh, do audience enjoy it? Do you have restrictions? Is there censorship? Is fine? You already said there's no financial support. You have to raise all the money by yourself. So tell us a little bit about the realities of making theater. So in this very fast, big, huge countries, each place has its own a very different ecosystem for arts itself. I can say for the contemporary arts, it's um, there are only there are very, very few big cities that kind of like you can say it represent the contemporary arts these days in Indonesia. So the lack of facilities of in the countries, within the countries itself, it's also give a big impact to that developing uh, development of, of contemporary arts. But of course, in Indonesia, you know, like the traditional arts is just happens everywhere. So it means that all of the people, they have that, you know, like um, it's in the genes, arts is in our genes. So I can say that even they're not going to uh, like a conventional theater, like black box theater production, but performances happen a lot on the streets or- Tell us a bit, know. Well, tell us about those performances. So for example, I can say, I can just say about the contemporary production, for example. We have very, very few black box theater in Indonesia. Very few. In this city, in Jogja itself, we can just only say one or two. And it's not- How really... many people live in your city? Ooh, I'm not really counting it. More or less, more or less. <laughs> Quite, um, I don't know, like a million? I don't know, I'm a so million. bad. So it's one, one black box per a million people. Exactly. But theater happens outside. But now so many theaters are trying in Europe say, we should leave the black box, we go outside. You have been doing this for centuries. So tell exactly. us what, what do you, so what, there, how does it with, work? With that, with that situation, there are lots of artists actually build their own spaces or react, give a reaction on that art scene. So they can do performances anywhere, you know? Of course, we do have like concert hall here in, in Jogja, but not really in a good facilities with the lighting and the sound system and everything. It's run by the government. Um, I can say, but yeah, well, they're like just only very small piece of cake for so many people. Yeah. So I can say that for Paper Moon it, um, ourselves, we do lots of performances in site specific play as well. Like we do performances in antique shops or of course still in a black box theater, but then we try to explore spaces. So like what's, yeah. what spaces? Like I've told you, we did performance in antique shops or library or people's houses. So yeah, it's kind of like, and also, so people there, call, hmm? people, call also there are some kind of like alternative spaces like coffee shops, they kind of like um, could be collaborate together with artists. For example, every two years we host International Biennale Puppet Festival that run by and initiated by Paper Moon since 2008. Mm -hmm. So this year is supposed to be the seventh edition of it on October 2020. Last two years, we had 75 artists from 16 countries came independently with their own money. And then we make the production, uh, the presentation of their works in black box theater, in coffee shops, in the garden, in and also in the village. So we bring them to Paddy Fields 
make performance in paddy fields and in people's houses or under the shades. So those kind of really mix of variety. Fantastic. Actually, kind of theater. If New York theater restarts, it will be, I spoke with Marvin Carlson yesterday, the great historian of theater, um, uh, who they said it will most probably start again in small uh, spaces. You know what you, you'll be doing now. And he said it might be also a good thing. It might be some reflect for us. Of course, it's a tremendous loss in the industry. All the people who are out of work. Broadway is a big uh, employer of technicians, yeah. musicians, actors. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's an incredible loss for a city like New York that also defines itself through the arts and through the theater. But um, these are um, uh, changing times. And, uh, and so it's important to hear, you know, what works. So, you, so do people like coffee houses, do they pay you? Do they commission no. you? Do you pay to be there? Um, so how does it work? They just say, okay, come tomorrow at 2 p.m. and build <laughs> the show. Or yeah, how well, does it work? It depends. It depends on how the, you know, the collaboration happened. But most of the places here, we kind of like, you know, okay, you can use our space for free, for example, but your guests need to buy some drinks from us. You know, this, I think in off, off Broadway situation, it's also maybe happened almost the same thing, kind of like mm -hmm. off, 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 off Broadway. Yeah. Um, and then also some spaces we need to pay, but still yeah. with kind of like reasonable price. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why and there are plenty of festivals happen in the city, Frank. Like I can say, I think some people ever counted, like some organization ever counted. In Jogja itself, we do have three, around 350 festivals in a year. Really? And one per day, basically? Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. And it's mostly our independent festival. That's incredible. And people go, enjoy it. And oh, yeah. And so, this functions okay. all without state government uh, funding. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So some of them, they got supported by the government, but mm -hmm. also lots of them, they just supported by the communities or they just do it because they thought this is, this is their passion. You know, this is like, some of the people are still thinking that making arts is actually part of their religious, spiritual, spiritual process. Mm -hmm. So I found that this is, yeah, it's how... So art is part of the, uh, the everyday life. There's not a strong separation that you work now and live and then you go see that you feel it's, it is a, a connected. Yeah. yeah, there are some of them are still like that, especially those who are kind of, I can say that lots of artists are still doing that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Tell us a little bit, why, why do you do theater? What is your idea? Why, do you, why did you decide to do theater in Indonesia, where you, your country? Well, honestly, I was graduated from social politics, communication studies. I never learned uh, theater in a formal way. And puppetry is something that I found along the way. But living in Jogja, it's kind of like being artist is contagious, I can say. Like, you know, you have plenty of friends and they're artists, they're doing art activities. Like, you mm -hmm. know, Jonet, right? Like you say it about, and he's one of my former director a um, few years back, like long, long time ago. So we kind of like got influenced by each other. And then mm -hmm. for me in the beginning, I love, I love making performance because for me, it's kind of like making magic. But then I, I joined a theater company for four years and then I decided, oh, maybe this is not for me. I love, I love the performing arts production, but not as an actress. So I moved out, I, I teach, I taught in um, kindergarten, I work in a ceramic studio. So I jump around and trying many different things. And then I end up with, with my husband because he is a visual artist. So we decided to combine performing and visual art. And we found that puppetry is the thing. And I found that, Especially with puppetry, I found that this is such a magic. It's a bridge to communicate between people because sometimes people couldn't talk to each other. They need something in between them. And we found that with puppetry, we can really say about really, really sensitive issue with even with nonverbal performance because Paper Moon's production are nonverbal. So nonverbal yeah, mean there are no words? No words. Why? Yeah. Um, in the beginning, we, we, we tried to make performances with verbal performance with puppetry. 
but then on the on a long way to go and actually it was found on 2008 and i found that wait a minute all of these words spoken by the puppeteers it's not the puppet's language it's the puppeteer's language so i found that oh maybe we have to reduce the words slowly by slowly but then on 2009 until 2010 me and iwan effendi my husband the co-artistic director of paper moon we got grant by the asian cultural council to stay for six months in new york to do research mm -hmm. about puppetry so it's so actually cool. giving us like really big brainwash to our mind um and we found that okay let's just try because we found that puppetry has its mother language which is the gesture so since then we decided not using words and then the first production that we tried to make that with complete no words and no gibberish as well was a production about the 1965 tragedy of indonesia so it's a silent history so we found that it becomes a very um primary reason for not using words because it's a silent history so it was the history of indonesia tell us about themes other themes of your work what are the plays about so so for that piece it called muatirika so that piece was actually tour to United States as well, to seven cities under the center stage program. And that's where actually Rachel Cooper also saw our live production. Um, it's about, because in 1965, there is a big uh, tragedy about the killing of the communist people after the 1965 to 1969. And also mm -hmm. lots of uh, communist people were taken to jail without going to the uh, court. And then, until today it's still kind of like a very sensitive thing to be to be spoken to be discussed um on 2010 we found that oh we have to just do this because we know that the younger generation getting less and less understand about that history it was not in the history book and of course if it's written it was written by the by the power by the big power the winner and then mm -hmm. we found that you know it's not true it's not completely true so we try to, you know, and we understand that this could be happen again if we don't understand about what happened in that past. So that's why we found that it's very important for us to make the show about that piece. Mm -hmm. So that's incredible. That was you said it. People cannot talk about it, so you make a silent piece about it with puppets, you know, who had, in a way don't have a. They're not actors, they don't have a political agenda. You know, they are pieces of wood. Basil Jones talked about this, how that helped him in, in South Africa. He felt they could messages across because a puppet, after all, is an object. It could say things, and they, of course, used words, but it can do things you, uh, makes you think. And, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it's also very interesting when we perform that piece in the United States, there are a couple of uh, people came to, like I've told you, because we always invited audience to come on stage and they say, like, I remember that was in Pennsylvania. There is a German lady, old lady. She came to me and she cried so hard. And she said, like, this is what happened with my family when the uh, West German and East German separation. So it was just like puppetry with nonverbal performance. It becomes very wide, you know, because you can project your story to that stage and you can build your own narration and there's another japanese no, filipinos lady actually came to me and said like this is what happened with my family when the japanese soldier came to my my house so this is kind of like oh my gosh this is not only talking about indonesia it talk about mm -hmm. you know many different political turmoil that happened around the world yeah so it gives uh, people space to create their own imagination and um, and the representation on stages in an open um, in an open way what are other themes you focus on in your puppet work um it's very interesting because we kind of like always go to the lost kind of like uh, theme so the latest production stage production that we did was uh, the title is Puno Letters to the Sky. This piece is supposed to be traveled to Japan actually on May as well. Say the so, title again, I didn't fully hear it. Puno Letters to the Sky. Okay. So for this piece, it's dedicated for the children that lost their parents. Um, we found that in Indonesia, we've I faced lots of loss of parents and they have still have little kids because of the health problems, you know, those kind of, or accident and it's also happened with my family i lost my brother and 
I have my niece and my uh, nephew as well. So I found that what should we say to these little kids about the loss of their parents? So mm -hmm. in that piece, we're actually asking people through our social media before our production happened, we asked them to send us letters. We said to them, if you miss your beloved one who already passed away, whoever they are, send them letters and write them letters and send it to us. And we promise to send it to the sky. So we received hundreds of letters with so many different languages. And we rewrote it on paper boats and we install it to the ceiling of the theater. And by the end of the show, all of these letters coming down. And then it's kind of like rain of paper boats with handwritten letters on it. And then people can read one by one of those letters after the show. So for this kind of situation, we found that, my gosh, we travel with that piece. And every time we finish the production, I mean, finish the performance, it feels like we are in a, we are in a room that people are grieving together and they have the chance to just cry and admit that they're not okay, but then they know that they're not alone. So in that kind of situation, we found that, well, this is sometimes what arts can do to people. And it's very interesting because we perform in three cities in Indonesia and there is a lady that keep watching all production. So she's following us to these three cities. And by the end, like the, the last city, she finally came to us, came to me and said, thank you, Ria. I've been following this production in three cities. And I said, wow, she's a big fan. I mean, in the beginning, like, oh, thank you so much. But then she said, because this is the promise that I made to my late husband. He died before we managed to see your production. But she's like, oh my gosh. Or a mother said two weeks ago, my son passed away. Thank you. Because of mm -hmm. this piece, I feel like I can speak to him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those kind of, we make so, those so, kind yeah. of So we, you really have a, such a strong connection to your audience. What you do is meaningful. It helps to understand life, go through life and to come to terms with what we are facing. In this, for you personally as an artist, human being, this COVID crisis, did something change inside you? How are you experienced this? I appreciate the smallest thing these days. You know, like I, I go gardening and, you know, I have times to do that. And then I got cough a little bit and we got, you know, stress with the little cough, just only about, oh my gosh, I got cough. So having no, having this breathing normally, it's a bless because of this situation. So I found that, yeah, in this situation, I really appreciate teeny tiny things that being surrounded people that you love, it's the most important thing. And then sharing positive energy, it's, it's a cure. That is, that's what I learned a lot from this situation. Of course, we, you know, we kind of like, we kind of like forced to stop um, and slow down. And I think this is, this is really strong for, for me, basically. It's right. hard, hard to do, to, to slow down. It's beautiful to slow down. Beautiful to be slowed down. It's beautiful to be slowed down and to appreciate life, to, to, to be care to each other, you know, and to help each other with what we can do. I think that's, that's the, the, the most important thing that we need to have today, basically. Hmm. So how do you spend your day? How, how, how does it look like a day in the life of a puppeteer in Jakarta? <laughs> in Yogyakarta. Jakarta is our capital city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, in the morning, I go to watering my plants. I started to grow our foods, <laughs> like plant some vegetables. Um, and then I'm really into, I'm really into plants. So these days, it's just like heaven for me to just do stuff with that. I play around with my son a lot, like because he's schooling from home. So yeah, I play around with him. And actually my husband started to create his printmaking studio because he's supposed to do a solo exhibition in New York as well on April. Where? In Sapar Contemporary in Chelsea. Is it mm -hmm. in Chelsea? Oh, Tribeca, in Tribeca. Tribeca. Mm -hmm. So he's supposed to, he already packed all of his works, but he didn't, he couldn't go. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah, we keep like, it's very interesting because every morning it's all the coffee time for me and my husband. And we discuss a lot about artistic, aesthetic, like ideas. 
so this is really magical in because you know as an like i've told you we have scheduled like a year before planning of months all the calendar are full with colors but suddenly it's all white and blank so this is for us in a way that we are very lucky that we can still say that this is precious time for us to stop because some of other people they they don't know what to deal with this blank calendars right but we mm -hmm. found that wow this is amazing this is kind of like this is precious so it's built more energy to make works in a way and do you read things or do you um, listen to different things what are you uh... I How do you keep your engine warm, as you call it? <laughs> I started to take online classes. <laughs> on, on what? Online classes. Yeah, with what? Like storytelling, really get back to the basic um, storytelling. Or I just bought an online classes of making children pictorial books. And I will start mm -hmm. it tomorrow. I'm so excited with that. Um, you know, like lots of long dreams like oh making books like okay maybe this is the time to start so yeah, yeah i'm reading books um children books mostly because i would love to get more inspired to start like maybe i need to start to draw again mm -hmm. so yeah so not maybe really, we'll... we don't have tv at home so you're not watching tv at all mm. so <laughs> so maybe it will be the beginning of the paper moon uh publishing house uh, oh we do have it okay. oh you do Voila. So this is from the. Oh, I is, see. This is from the Letters to the Sky production, and mm. I I made I made the script into pictorial books basically. And mm. right now, it's actually we are also preparing for a book of Paper Moon. It is written by twenty five people from around the world as well, mm -hmm. um, writing article about Paper Moon Puppeteer, and mm -hmm. we are now on process on layouting that and start to print it. And it will be published also in English version, hopefully Fantastic. very so, near future. And maybe if we are back to you, one day you come to the Siegel Center and you uh, present your work. So um, do you think Indonesia will, will change or your city will change through COVID? Is the, your relation to the city and your work, do you think there will be a difference? So I'm, I'm not, well, with Paper Moon's work, as soon as we start our work, maybe like what you said before, a teeny tiny intimate production will be the best choice for that one to start with. And then we love intimate productions and it's what we've been making actually. The production that we did in Antique Shop, it was just contained 25 people. So that will be like that in my opinion, but also how about the cities this is very interesting frank because in jogja we got a big very active volcano mountain and we got hit by earthquake very big earthquake on 2006 so people in jogja i can say that's why we kind of like very fast to support each other because i can say we kind of like get in use to disaster so um this is what we found very interesting because in the time that it passed, then people come back to their life again, like normal life. I don't know what will be the new normal for this time. Um, it definitely will change something to the city, especially because this is a tourist and very tourism city, touristic city. So it will change, definitely. But I don't know in which direction. Hmm. Yeah, that is, um, that is quite something. And um... For your fellow artists or theater artists, do you think they have, uh, if you say you have 300 festivals, uh, which is just incredible, but do you feel till next December, till all the time, will they be able to, to feed themselves to work, uh, to, um, to um, uh, be able to, uh, to, to, to survive in a way that is uh, respectful to their contribution they make to the society and the city and the community? Mm. So this is what I found very interesting that uh, for our festival itself on October, we, we are trying hard to still keep it, keep it happen, but virtually. I know that it cut lots of the team that's supposed to, you know, set up the lightings and they won't work. So in this way, we kind of like there's some festivals starting to support those workers, art workers. But again, it's initiated by independent like communities of artists. 
So, yeah, we can say that how will they survive? It's how they, we can just live in an enough for now. I think, you know, not really like you said about asking about, did you get paid well with that? I don't know, but maybe this is enough for now. And yeah. to make sure, mm -hmm. this is how to make sure that everyone are in the same loop. And this is our big homework today. I mean, you know, I keep asking questions to our friends, our technical manager, because we're not doing performances with them, right? Like, are you okay? Can, can we just discuss to make something? And even like, okay, let's make a package of hampers for Idul Fitri and then we'll sell it to support you guys. You know, those kind of situation. It's the way that we, we really try to kind of so like- you, yeah. So you, as you do with some merchandise or you produce things. I mean, we heard devastating account just now also from Brazil. Mm. Um, last week where they say it's really about existential survival they feel there's no support actually the government is openly hostile mm. against uh, artists the ministry of culture was completely shut down um, as you know Anarupa Roy from India said you oh, know yeah. uh, wow. hundreds and thousands of people are out there's an artistic village of artists of a thousand or thousand eight hundred families she helps to mm. support and they don't have enough to eat but you feel Indonesia in a way as a society will be able to provide in some way that uh, people yeah. will come out I can, of this. I can feel that because I don't know about the other cities because I think it's quite different in many pla different places. But in Jogja, I can just say in, in our city itself, like for example, I just saw my, my friend post it on Instagram or in Facebook, they say it about, oh yeah, in, in, in their street, they start to put foods like vegetables or whatever, rice, outside their gates so anyone who feel they need it they can just pick it up you know those are very very simple very basic but it's such a big gesture for me yeah yeah so like there is um a school in for what do you call it like street children they're making farm and then they're open if people would love to donate some money you can get some vegetables but these other veggies will go to another communities that will need it so I found that this is very big happen. And we are not that kind of like lock, lock, lock down like Italy, you know? Yeah. So we still can, we can still go and, you know, it's not that really not really stressful in that yeah. way, you know, because other countries, you really couldn't go. Like thinking about India, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm a, a good friend of Anurupa as well. So it's just like, I couldn't imagine that. It's very, very hard situation. Yeah. And do you, we are coming closer to the end, do you feel um, there's something what you wish would change or what uh, a government could do or should do make your work easier? Do you, is there something you feel uh, you, can, you can ask for, what you would dream of that would make your work easier? Wow, this is a bit, it's a very hard situation. I think because no government are ready with this situation. Like no one in this whole world are ready with this situation. Um, I think, I don't know, I couldn't say anything. To, maybe this is, we're, we're getting used to work with ourselves. So thinking of mm -hmm. asking the government to, to do something, it's, you know, as long as they just provide the good health care and facilities, that's amazing, you know? And mm -hmm. I really wish for the people that can help hand in hand. It's, I think the people powers, is what really we really, really need today. It's not just only hang on, you know, the government or the rich people or whatever, but all hand in hands. I think it's, it's, it's the time for that. So everybody is called to action, to participate, to be actively exactly. involved and, um, and make uh, the world a better place. Since you also teach and give seminars, so what do you say to young artists who are coming out, whether it's Indonesia or people who listen to us, also our viewers, what do you think is the important thing to focus about or what to keep in mind in this time of uh, Corona and this time of lockdown? Keep your engine warm. <laughs> so that's, that's the first thing. Like you, you just need, for me, for us in Paper Moon, we have this, in the COVID-19 era, we have this statement of imagination is much more bigger rather than space. So even our body is locked, you know, our imagination needs to be, you know, going somewhere else. It can go further and bigger. 
So I hope that each each of us can can help each other to keep that alive because that is what we really really need these days, Frank. Like you know, if you don't have more you know clear ideas or imagination or positive energy in your life, it's all go very very dark and very hard. And it's I can say like, let's try to make a little lights in this foggy night. So I think that's what we can do together. We need to do together to pass this. Toxic. No, this is a, a, a wonderful a symbol to create light in the fog of life we live in and to, to keep the engine warm and to participate and to, to um, you know, make this world a, a place that is um, accessible for everyone and that also to think about everyone. This is a, a wonderful, um, um, inspiring conversation. Thank you so much for staying up so late. It's almost midnight. <laughs> And, uh, I've got I, pumped now. My my yeah. battery is on. <laughs> Thank yeah, you so I much. see your your light is on. Your lantern and in the very back, it's a beautiful space you have there, and I see the hammer and all of this. So really, <laughs> really, thank you, and I hope you will be back. Uh, to, to New York and also shows the significance of institutions like the Asian Cultural Council, the Asia Society, you know, to help us to connect, to be together, and to influence that you came to New York and something happened in your work and then New York artists uh, travel and go, go around. So thank you really, uh, this was an important update and, uh, and I hope uh, that um, everything will, will work out as, as planned and that it will be um, a time soon that uh, we can go back to, to sharing life uh, together with everyone. And we will go on this week uh, with our talks. Tomorrow we have Pamela Milorezi from Italy, an actor, a director who runs a theater in Palermo in Sicily, Teatro Biondi, and she will come to, uh, to us with uh, Leo Luca Orlando, the mayor, the great mayor um, of Palermo, who helped refugees to get off the boats with permissions, who uh, really uh, took a stand that his city is a city of theater and uh, the significance of incorporating, including, engaging with the refugee uh, community. Palermo, of course, in Sicily is uh, much closer to the front lines in Europe and that idea. So it's an important update and to hear of, of the revitalization of that town. Um, the great Richard Foreman, the great uh, master of theater, experimental theater and theater in general uh, will join us on Wednesday and talk uh, what's uh, on his mind, which is always enlightening and significant. Uh, Thomas Oberender from Berlin and the Berlin Festspiele who runs the Corpus Bau, the Immersion Festival uh, the theater treffen, the theater meeting in Berlin, and all the looks the film uh, uh, festspiele as well as the jazz festival. He uh, is uh, one of the minds that observe the landscape in Europe and in Germany. And it's the first time we also will have curators now joining us. We're slowly opening up to curators, thinkers, uh, philosophers, others. So uh, it will be interesting to hear his take, uh, what the uh, ramifications will be and how he is experiencing um, this um, from his from his home. And on Friday, we have um, New York um, artists uh, uh, with us. Uh, Philip Howe uh, will come and, uh, and uh, talk to us and, um, and give an update uh, how um, he experiences as a, as a playwright. And uh, he will be joined by two other uh, guests. I don't think not all fully clear who it will be, but it will be a, the insight into the New York uh, theater community. So um, thank you really um, for, for joining us. Thanks to our listeners for taking the time out of the you know, busy days. We all experience how fast the day passes, even with this. Strange to think that it's been two months now and how often, yeah. how fast two months pass in our normal lives. We don't even recognize it on the way it kind of uh, slowed us all down, but made us reflect, but it also moved fast. And um, is a significant time, an important time in life. As you said, the universe wants to breathe. As some people say, maybe the world is a dream by a God. And, uh, and in his dream, he takes, he takes a break and we are uh, uh, experiencing that. So um, we uh, look forward to uh, our upcoming talks. Uh, and thanks to HowlRound again, uh, Thea, Travis, uh, for, for uh, hosting us, and VJ, the Siegel team, San Yang, and uh, a great Andy, who, who just joined us. We said goodbye to Jackie and May, who uh, went on to different, different paths. So thank you all for coming. I hope you will join in tomorrow. And um, Stay safe, stay tuned. All the talks can be accessed on HowlRound. Just go on the HowlRound, do HowlRound and the artist or on the Siegel Center YouTube site again. Thank you so much. This is 
uh, been an honor to talk to you and I look forward uh, to meeting you in New York one day. Thank Bye -bye. you so much, Frank, for having me.